If you've ever been tagged out because your blaster decided to jam, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, Nerf Modulus Ion Fires. Today we'll be going over a highly requested blaster, my custom HK416 Griffin. Crappy Garand thumb impression aside, yes. In this video, I'm finally covering my custom HK416 Griffin. Okay, this isn't just technically an HK416 replica. It's generic enough to be any M4, M16, Mark 18, Salt Mod 2, SR15, Sig Spear, MCX, Honey Badger, or any other AR15 style platform. I just like HK416s, so I call mine a HK416. For those that don't know, the Griffin is a 3D printed flywheel blaster designed by Flygonio. It's essentially a strife alternative with just as many parts and options available for it. This build is using the Griffin 1.3 file set by Flygonial, along with some parts from the Miko Mark 30 Griffin Vault, some parts I found off Thingiverse, and some parts modified by yours truly. Links to most of these parts will be in the description below. Quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. All the 3D printed parts were printed by me, and any internals, attachments, and STL files were paid for by me, and everything was assembled using my own hands. With the disclaimer out of the way, we'll be going over this build from tip to butt. I'm using the threaded Griffin muzzle and suppressor by Adrian. I modified the suppressor myself as the original model is about 12 centimeters, which seems a little short for what is supposed to be a rifle build. So I extended it to 15, which is the same length as the worker suppressors and looks much nicer. The suppressor threads on and off for transport or for when I want the unsuppressed look. My Griffin barrel is a custom carbine barrel I extended myself. The original carbine barrel by Flygonial is about 9.5 centimeters, which is just enough to fit an angled foregrip on there with a bit of the grip hanging off the front. While in my opinion it looked better than the standard Griffin, it wasn't long enough for my hand to find a comfortable spot or provide enough rail space for tactical stuff. Because it was so short, I couldn't grip it with an angled grip without my arm being in an awkward position, and putting a vertical foregrip there was pointless since it was so close to the magwell already. I've seen some people make extended Griffin barrels online, Yet none of the files for those were public, so I took it into my own hands and extended it myself. My barrel is 17.5 centimeters long and has seven more Picatinny slots compared to the standard carbine barrel. Along with extending the rails, I modified them slightly so the side rails extend to be somewhat flush with the flywheel cage, and so the end of the rails have a taper to them like a HK416 does. This does sacrifice a Picatinny slot, but I don't care because it looks cooler. This barrel extension makes the Griffin look a whole lot nicer, and since the fly will sit horizontally, the barrel isn't super tall, making it very easy to C-clamp like an epic tactical operator. You can even C-clamp it with a peck box on the top rail and an angled grip, and it's still comfortable. The attachments I have on my rails change depending on my mood, but right now I have a Magpul MOE foregrip, a replica peck box on the side rail, a set of plastic HK416 iron sights on the top rail, a metal Magpul sling mount, and a replica tan EOTech on the top rail. The PEC does have a flashlight, red laser, and green light, but I don't use it in games and keep the battery out most of the time. I'm using these attachments as this is a clone build of HK416 from the game Girls Frontline. It's not an exact one-to-one -one replica of the one she has in the game, since it's missing the flashlight at the front, ladder rail covers on the sides, and I don't want to mount my EOTech so far forward because that's just dumb. Editing pen here. So I needed to record some more stuff after recording this and decided to try out that sight placement. And honestly, it isn't so bad. It does shift the balance of the blaster forwards, but the foregrip actually makes it decently manageable. Now back to the video. I'm using the angled mag weld available in the Griffin carbine files, which accepts straight talons. This helps complete the look of the blaster as it gives it the mag weld cut that most AR-15 style rifles have. I did modify the model to remove the little cutout that lets you see your magazine in the magwell, since I don't like the way that looks and it isn't that helpful for me anyway. This gives me a flat surface that I might put a sticker or something on in the future. On the inside, I'm using the pusher from the Mika Mark 30 Griffin Vault. This pusher is slightly shorter in height, so it has more clearance when moving through the mech cover and magwell. This saves me from sanding the pusher down a ton for it to be smooth. I'm using the blade style griffin trigger I found on Thingiverse instead of the standard trigger. This doesn't affect performance in any way, and I just like the way this trigger looks much more than the standard one. The rev trigger I'm using is also from the Mika Mark 30 files, which is shorter than the standard one and makes it blend into the grip frame like it's not even there. There are remixes of the grip frame which makes it a dual stage trigger, 
but I prefer the feel of dedicated rev triggers as they make it easier to pre-rev the flywheels. The Griffin 1.3 file set has two types of grip panels. I'm using the wide ones, since those are more comfortable to me than the standard ones, which makes the grip too thin for my liking. I'm using the buffer tube stock, since I prefer the way that one looks, and also having a collapsible stock makes it much easier to transport this thing. I've also built a similar Griffin for Joshua. His is set up slightly differently, with a mock pec box on the top rail, an EXPS EOTech, a 3D printed rail cover on the left rail, and a Magpul AFG2 on the lower rail. His Griffin also has a modified wire cover I made because the wiring was slightly too long to fit under the standard one. These Griffins were printed by me on an Ender 5 using PLA Plus by 3D Phillies. The extended barrels just barely fit on the build plate diagonally, so anything smaller than an Ender 5 will probably struggle to print these. The assembly process of the Griffin 1.3 is almost identical to the older Griffin. This is great because that means I don't need to make my own build guide and my lazy ass can just direct you to Brandon Diaz's Griffin assembly video. The main difference between the two file sets that I noticed was how the mech cover is assembled. The old mech cover is separated into three parts, which makes printing it slightly easier, but this increases the amount of screws you need to assemble the blaster. The Griffin 1.3 has these three parts merged into one piece, which is a bit harder to print, but it saves you from using four more screws. This design revision has its own drawbacks though, especially when it comes to disassembling the blaster for maintenance. Because the wires run through the right side of the mech cover, once the Griffin is wired up, the entire mech cover is now stuck to the circuit. This wasn't an issue with the old design, since you could just remove the top and left side cover and do your maintenance that way. But with the 1.3 design, this huge chunk of plastic is now hanging around and you can't really do much about it. The 1.3 mech cover also seems to have less room for wires compared to the older design. I struggled to fit the 16 gauge wire through the channel and one of the wires isn't even sitting in there properly. It also has cutouts on the right side of the cover so instead of using 4 screws you can use 2 bolts and nuts for even less hardware. I still use 4 M3 screws instead of nuts and bolts since I already had those lying around. Though the 1.3 mech cover saves you from dealing with 4 more screws, I much prefer the older design as it was much easier to maintain the blaster. The 1.3 grip frame was also modified, so it and the magwell joint were merged together into one part to save on hardware and make it stronger. Moving on to performance, I'm using a Griffin Max cage which is a 39.5mm crush cage that uses daybreak wheels, running on 180neo Hellcats and a 3S LiPo. This setup is hitting an average of 155 FPS with a high of 184 and a low of 138. Having the suppressor on or off doesn't seem to affect performance in any way. This setup in the standard carbine barrel hits an average of 147 with a high of 169 and a low of 137. It's worth noting that the carbine barrel readings were using a sample size of 10 shots instead of my normal 20 shots and they were also recorded at an earlier date. Joshua's Griffin is also using a Griffin Max cage but it's using the 132 Neo worker motors and a 3S LiPo. This setup is getting an average of 157 FPS with a high of 173 and a low of 141, so both setups are pretty identical performance wise. Now let's go outside and see them shoot.
Overall, this blaster gives some pretty solid performance in a sleek form factor. The Griffin is a great 3D printed platform, as it's compatible with pretty much any flywheels or motors you would put into a Strife which you would have to gut anyway, while also having its own options and parts available for it. In the future, I could swap out the magwell to shoot full length darts and get a bit more FPS, or even make it full auto. It won't be out sniping any springers anytime soon, but its performance is perfectly acceptable for a flywheeler, especially one with a barrel almost 35cm long. One thing I did notice about the buffer tube is there is a chance it will wear out over time. I tried reprinting my buffer tube to fix this issue and it still collapses from time to time. If you want a griffin of your own, you can of course print and assemble one yourself, but Frontline Foam and Xbox Games sell complete griffins. I'll link their shops and the files I used in the description below. Flygonio has also listed the Griffin under the CC01 license, so you could ask or commission someone in your local group to make one for you. If you wanted an extended Griffin like this, however, this is where I break your heart. As of recording this video, I'm being a huge hypocrite and not planning on releasing these files to the public. Because the Griffin barrel is directly connected to the flywheel cage, I've only extended the max cage so only a 39.5mm crush version of this barrel is currently available. I do not know how to use CAD software and use Blender to modify these files which is a pretty inefficient process and causes some weird geometry inside the models, which can lead to issues when slicing the model for printing. If this video gets enough attention and people bugging me in the comments for the files, I might extend all the cages and sell them as a bundle with all my other modified files for about $5 or something. Anyway, I love this blaster and I love the Griffin platform. If you're planning a Strife mod, especially a half dart one, and have your own 3D printer, consider printing a Griffin instead. Aside from printing, there's less shell work you need to do, and any flywheels and motors you plan on putting in a Strife will work in this. It's already replaced my HK416 Strife as my go-to flywheeler, and this has served me for almost 5 years. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, press YouTube buttons, and I'll see you in the next one. If I had a dollar for every griffin I've made, I'd have three dollars. I'd have four dollars.